talk about them with you today. Um, I just finished this morning a hat. It's unblocked, but I don't know if I'm even gonna block it. It was part of the Level Up in 2021 Cal um, with Caleb from Drowning in Yarn. And uh, he's having a really cool cow knit along that really uses um, a hat as the means to learn something new or to experiment with a stitch pattern, to um, work on a skill that you've never done before. Maybe it's color work, maybe it's brioche. So it's an awesome knit along because it really is choose your own adventure in a way where you choose the pattern, you choose what you wanna learn, and at the end, you learn a new skill and you get a finished object. So super fun and I love the hat because it's such a simple uh, a simple base but then you can do so much um, with it so I I worked on this hat right here and this is the hipster hat by Petite Knits and to be honest I'm obsessed with it it actually is I just wore it out um, when I popped over to the grocery store so it's it is freshly worn and still cold from the snow. <laughs> um, but it's an uh, this is an awesome hat. It is a two by two rib all the way around, kind of just a big stocking, super stretchy. And then at the top, it kind of um, decreases in ribbing, which I love. I love this um, very, like it, it stays in pattern when decreasing for the crown. So I really like that. And then it is a fold up brim, so it can kind of be like a, a tight fitting cap or it can be a slouchier beanie, depending on kind of how long you want to knit the brim. Um, you know, you could double, you know, you could knit this really long and then fold it two times to kind of quadruple the warmth around your ears. I found that this was very warm, um, but I used two colors held double, so it is a DK weight, um, DK or, you know, or worsted kind of, um, in my mind, they're kind of the same, but two fingering weight strands held double is what I did, um, and it works out really great. So I held, um, this is my pitchfork fiber, um, fingering weight, 75% merino wool and 25% nylon sock yarn in the duck boots colorway. It's a really beautiful tonal um, kind of caramel warm brown that is just a beautiful pop of a neutral. In a way it's like a more colorful neutral but it really will go with any color. So I loved holding that with this which is Hobie Atlas which is also a 75-25 yarn and this is kind of a variegated um stripey with teals um and blue a little bit of like gray brown and then some chartreuse in there uh so it really is kind of um a really variegated yarn but together it really kind of mellowed out i love the way that the brown from the duck boots just marled it together. And so you do see some striping as you can kind of see along here um, and also down here on the brim, but it really was subtle. It wasn't overtly stripey um, or variegated and I really enjoyed that. So this is something that I've already worn. I literally bound off this morning um, and it was super easy. So I could see this being a really fun knit in like a super bright color yarn, A vibrant orange, which I I love a vibrant hat. Um, I could see this in like a neon, I could see it in a fuchsia, um, but I also could see it in like a navy or, you know, really the, um, the solid colors will really show off that rib pattern and then the crown decreases. So I think that that's really fun. I liked the Marl look because it, it's kind of made this just like a throw on cap. Um, but I'm really happy with that. It fits great. I knit the largest size and I did go down one needle size um, just because I have kind of a a little bit of a larger or a looser gauge. So that worked out perfectly. And the ribbing, because it's two by two, is super forgiving. So 
I mean, it really is small when you look at this. Like, this is really skinny, um, and it it really stretches out quite wide. So that's my first finished object. Um, we'll definitely knit it again, for sure. This is one of those kind of hats that would be perfect to give to someone because it's pretty quick, it's DK. Um, it looks really professional. It looks like something that you could find at a store, which I think for people that maybe aren't knitters themselves, um, they like that quality of, of when it looks nice and um, professional, but it's handmade. And um, like definitely perfect for Christmas or birthdays or you know, whatever. So that's that. Um, my next finished object is also a hat by Petite Knits. I have made three Petite Knit hats this year so far. Um, I, I slightly am obsessed. I mean, call me obsessed. I don't know, I love it. Um, but this is a, this is also a Petite Knit, but this is the Oslo hat um, mohair edition. And I was working on this last episode and was quite far and I finished and it's beautiful. This is six and seven yarn, both um, the base and also in the mohair. Um, so check out last episode, last podcast, if you wanna see um, those yarns se separate. I showed them off there. Beautiful yarn. Um, I love this pattern as well. So well written, also so easy. You just knit and knit and knit. You, you know, knit to where you need to knit to, the length, you switch, you know, whatever you gotta do, decrease, increase, you know, whatever. And then you have a hat, it's like so mindless and it looks so professional. I love the halo of this yarn. I am obsessed with the yarn. I love the pattern. I am a little disappointed in my personal execution of this. This was the first Oslo mohair edition hat that I did that I made and then I finished another one last week where I made um, some adjustments and it fit perfect. But this one is super awesome. I love it. My only quarrel or problem with this particular hat that I've knitted is that when I cast it on, I, I used too small of a needle and because I was afraid it was gonna to be too loose. So I went down like two needle sizes, I think, and then it was just too tight. And then when I roll it up, it's tight on my head. Like it's not like this is as far as it stretches. And it's only really that first inch of the cast on that's really tight. And it just kind of compresses my head and it isn't as comfortable. There's not as much room, wiggle room in a hat that I want. So um, it just isn't as comfortable. And because of that, I, I wouldn't necessarily reach for it. But this yarn is so beautiful and is also special since my mom gave it to me for Christmas that I am gonna maybe try to rip it out. I know that that's like a sin for mohair, but since I held it together, if I rip it out together, I'm thinking it might work. Um, if not, then I'm gonna just have a really cute hat that fits like just on my head. Like, so it's not over my ears and forehead because this is much smaller. But you know, like, this is a look, right? I'm kind of into it. It's like Smurf. Anyways, <laughs> um, I love the pattern. I So I knit this out of six and seven yarn, but then I also finished another hat, and but I actually have already gifted it to the person. Um, I'll throw up a picture right here. This is the same hat, the Oslo hat mohair edition by Petite Knit. And I used two completely different types of yarn for this as for my last one. I used a plain bare base um, of 100%, uh, I, I believe it's 100% superwash wool uh, merino, 100% or 100% just mer uh, merino wool in a fingering weight um, four ply. 
really squishy and soft. I love this base. I was kind of testing it out and I really like this as a um, non superwash option. And I held it with this black, um, it, it is supposed to be black, but it is more kind of like a very dark charcoal. Um, and this is a, a sugar bush yarn in the drip drizzle in the midnight mist colorway. And this, to be honest, like I got this on Amazon. It well, came in like a little ball like this, um, 25 grams, uh, which actually was perfect for one hat. I bought two just in case um, because I knew that I only really used 50 grams of uh, fingering weight for one of these hats. And so I kind of, I wanted to buy myself one so I could get two hats out of it. So the first hat that you saw um, in the picture only used one ball of this, so this is the other one. And then this is the other 50 grams of the yarn. So that was worked up really well. And I modified my, per I didn't modify the pattern, but I modified what I did from this previous hat and it worked out way better. I used the, I believe it's called the German twisted cast on or something like that um i'll i'll put it right here just to make sure but it is a basically it's like a long tail cast on um with an extra little twist that makes it a little bit more stretchy so i made sure that i um, cast it on with a stretchier cast on and then i went up um a size i believe i went up i went up from a us one to a us 2.5 because I wanted it to be definitely larger. That's what I did. So with this hat, with using these two colors, I knit um, the, si the largest size with the US 2.5 and um, used that stretchier cast on and it worked out perfectly. It fit super snugly, but also had room in which it wasn't, didn't feel tight. Um, and so super great. I sent that to the recipient in the mail already, so I don't have it to show you, but um, hopefully those photos worked out well. So that's my um, third, that, that's the third finished object. Like I literally don't know if I've ever had three finished objects in one podcast and it's like relatively recent. So that's, that's a big deal for me. And it's so funny because like, and this is something we can talk about later, but I'm so used to knitting like a large object, maybe like a sweater. And because I think that was what really motivated me was knitting a garment that I could wear and I'd work on it for months and then it'd be done and it'd be exciting and I'd move on to the next big project. And so I'd finish, you know, it'd take a lot more time to finish. Um, but these smaller like projects are just as gratifying for me and they're so fast. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could knit. And unlike socks, where socks is also, I like to just like work on socks, but only having the one hat is so cool. So I'm definitely like digging the hat. Plus it's been literally so cold here in Chicago. It has been very, very cold. I don't go out much because I'm, um, you know, I, I don't have to leave my house. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not just like gallivanting around. Um, so because of that, I don't really often go out, but, um, when we go to our cabin in Wisconsin, like, and we're out shoveling or going on a walk or something, um, you know, it, it's really cold. So having a nice warm mohair slash real nice thick wool hat totally makes a difference. Um, I do have a Carhartt hat, which I love also. It's like, um, it's really thick as well. And that's why I like this hat because it's the exact same style of hat and the fit as a Carhartt hat. So um, I really enjoyed that. Um, moving on to works in progress. I guess the first one I wanted to show you is not really like, oh, it was a work in progress, but um, it's kind of what got me to here. And I guess I'll show you that first. So I um, was sent a box of some yarn, 
a package of yarn from Hobie, which is a global online, it's a global um, online yarn store where basically they, they ship globally and they have a ton of selections of types of wool that are more affordable than maybe um, some like indie dyed yarns or, or more luxurious yarns. And so there, um, I consider it to kind of like a nitpicks here in America, um, but they ship globally. So that's really awesome if you are wanting maybe a, a more affordable option of yarn for a project. Um, and the quality is really great. However, I'll talk about this in a second, but they sent me three, um, they have a new series line coming out called the Atlas, which is these yarns. And they're all fingering weight kind of sock yarns. So they're 25, 75% wool, 25% nylon, um, 420 meters, 459 yards. And they come in these really fun colorways. I mean, and they have a lot of colorways, like the whole spectrum of rainbow neutrals, monochromatics, um, like all sorts. So I kind of picked ones that I wanted and knew that I that, that would fit well with kind of like my aesthetic and my coats. So I picked these three colorways and I knitted a, a swatch where I held them all together with duck boots with this colorway of mine from Pitchfork Fiber. And, um, and they, it came out really cool. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention this, but like I have a yarn brand and I started dyeing yarn and you can buy it and it's really awesome. Oh my God, I totally forgot. Okay, we're gonna talk about that later too. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, I guess it's the cold, it's, it's gotten to me. But uh, here is the swatch I did. This first color um, right here is, looks like this. It's it's really pretty. I really like the blue and brown kind of look together. And that's with this color yarn. And then this middle section right here um, was this. And it definitely was more stripey than I kind of expected. Um, you can see there's like distinct stripes. And then with the marled, with the duck boots colorway, um, it mellowed it out, but it still is pretty stripey. And then this last section right here um, was what I chose for this. It was still colorful and stripey, but not quite as um, large of stripes as this middle colorway that I showed you. So I created that and I think this was really smart because to be honest, looking at the yarn, I would have gone with the blue. And then after swatching, I liked this color and I'm really glad I went with it. Um, so that that's just a, a little, I guess it's like a tip. Um, I know most of you probably know, but a lot of times when marling colors are holding them together, you really don't know what they're going to look like until you knit with them. Um, like I thought, oh, it's stripey, you know, the greens are more stripey and the blue is kind of um, more variegated, but not quite as like distinct stripes. So I thought, oh, that's gonna be the best. But then when the colors kind of melded together and I saw in the swatch, it really did change my mind. So I think that like, you know, this isn't, doesn't take that much time. You know, it, it takes an hour or two but it was worth it because then I, instead of knitting on a hat for 10 hours or whatever, and getting a color that you're like, oh, that's not as what I thought. It's a lot better to like be confident going into to your uh, knitting. So that, that was like very helpful. So that was kind of just something I did. And then the second thing working the second work in progress is my Lilanol sweater, which I talked about last week. And we have a sleeve. I know that this is like kind of weird because last week I had a sleeve as well. I had one sleeve and now I have one sleeve. But this sleeve is way better than last time's sleeve. Um, this, so if you can go back and check out last podcast, but basically it was knit too tight. I was unhappy with the fit. 
Um, it was quite tight on my arm um, to the point where I don't know if I would have worn, I wouldn't have worn it as much. And I'm obsessed with this yarn. This is Brooklyn Tweed in I believe Caribou and Long Johns. Caribou is the gray kind of marl um, background color and Caribou, I'm sorry, and Long Johns is the red speckle. And uh, I love, I mean, I love the kind of wool and spun Brooklyn Tweed. It's so warm, it's so cozy, it's light. You just throw it over, It you know, it's like effortless. Um, so I knew that like if I went to the trouble of purchasing the yarn and you know, loving the yarn so much, I don't want it to just sit in my closet and not, not wear it. So I took out, I base, I ripped out the entire sleeve and re-knit it. And what I did, which I'm really happy, I actually used another, oh, sorry, I actually used another pattern as the base of th like for the size kind of guidelines. And then I used the motif from the pattern, from the Lelanol pattern to get this, with this sleeve, which I really love. So, and this is a great tip for um, you all where you might wanna modify something, but you're not quite as confident in doing like the math yourself. Um, Cause that, I, that's how I feel a lot of the time. I can like knit a swatch, which, um, and then, you know, calculate it. But I just, that makes me nervous sometimes. And maybe I don't trust my math sense, um, or maybe I just, you know, it's a lot easier when you've done something, it's like in set in ink on a pattern that people have knit that looks good. Um, anyways, I had already knit the Huron sweater two times out of Brooklyn Tweed um, before. So I already knew that Brooklyn Tweed with this, um, with a specific needle working this exact pattern with no, you know, modifications, the sleeve fit perfect and I loved it. And then I was comparing the differences um, between the Lelanol sleeve and the Huron sleeve. And I realized that um, the Huron sleeve was decreasing quicker and got wider um, faster versus the Lelanol sleeve was kind of more narrow and decreased more gradually, making it a tighter, slimmer fit. So all I did was I took the numbers and the um, increases from the Huron sweater and I just did it using this pattern um, of the speckles of my Lelanol. And so I get, I have, still have the same number of um, stitches at the end. And I also have the same number of stitches at the sleeve, but I just have a much better fitting sleeve. So um, now that I've kind of done a lot of the, the smaller projects, I need to cast on the next sleeve. Cause once I'm done with that, it's just the yoke. Um, and I'm done because it's a bottom up. So super happy with that. It it really does make a big difference um, when something fits well. Because then, you know, I really do reach for those sweaters that I know fit well and I love so much. And I have a few sweaters that don't necessarily fit as well as I would maybe have liked them to. And I don't barely ever wear them. So it's, it's worth it for me. So I'm really glad I ripped it out, frogged it, and started over. Um, that's it for what I've been working on and what I have finished. Um, the next segment is going to be my sh talking about my shop, about Pitchfork Fiber Yarns. Um, so let's get to it. Okay, so I didn't even tell you at the beginning, but I have started my own my own yarn line, Pitchfork Fiber, which is um, something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, but just kind of never um, had the the timing, motivation, resources, kind of everything at all at once. It, it never was really aligning um, to where I, I went for it. But having lost my, been laid off from my job um, in the middle of December of just two and a half months ago, two months ago, um, really was that kick in the butt to be like, okay, hey, you know, I'm not, I don't have a job right now. Um, I have the capabilities of creating yarns. I'm going to go for it. And I did. And I am so, so thankful 
to all of you that supported Pitchfork Fiber on the first launch with our 2021 spring collection. I was blown away at how people received the yarns, how the colorways resonated with people. Um, you know, it, it really was so exciting to see something that I have worked on and worked quite hard for um, to be received well. So thank you all for that. I am truly blessed and I'm so excited to keep doing it so that I that you all can keep getting beautiful yarn and keep making beautiful things. And um, so that's really exciting. I don't have a lot, all the colorways with me because um, some of a lot of the colors have sold out, which is like very crazy to me. Um, starting this, I had no, I literally do nothing. I didn't know like how many skeins to dye. I didn't know how much to buy, you know, all those things that take time to learn, I didn't know. And so I just went with it and was excited to see where it was gonna go. And so um, I have reordered some yarn and I'm going to hopefully have um, a, re a restock um, with some of the colorways on this Saturday, which is I Saturday the 20th, um, I believe February, Saturday the 20th. I will hopefully have a re a restock of some of the colors um, and we can talk about those but I do have some of them with me and I wanted to just kind of talk about them. I'll throw up some images as well as I talk about them but I thought it would be fun to to go through my um, my inspiration for some of the colorways, uh, talk about the ways I've dyed them, um, so just kind of like filling you in where my mind was and why I created these colorways. So it um, the collection was spring 2021 and with Pitchfork Fiber Yarns, I really want the collections to be um, a palette of color, like a color palette that really anyone can find something that they love from, but also you can mix and match pairing different colors together and you'll really not go wrong with any of the color combos. I know for me, picking out colors is sometimes hard, like picking out um, shades or like contra enough contrast or, you know, picking out those colors takes um, time. It takes like understanding of color theory and knowledge. Um, and I know that not everyone has the time to do that or wants to do that. And so I thought, um, I made sure that the colors I chose would work well together. And, um, you know, I had pops of color, I had some neutrals, I had some lights, some darks, some tonals, some solids. I kind of like thought, I tried to really think about it into a small collection. And um, the first color I dyed was this color right here, um, Sprout. Sprout is, this is a looking a little, it's hard because this is a, kind of like neon washed color. It isn't quite neon because it's not that vibrant, but it's like a wash of neon. Um, so sometimes the camera picks it up a little bit. So this is a little um, less saturated, but it's the right kind of color tonality. Um, right here, it's looking like really pink. It's kind of like going really wonky, um, but like this is kind of what it looks like. And it is a really uh, light but vibrant green yellow, like, kind of like a lime green. Um, and it, it reminded me of when leaves, like you can see all these leaves around me, when they sprout, they are not this color. They're like a really vibrant yellow um, chartreuse. And uh, going with this spring theme, I thought it was very, um, you know, it fit really well. And so this is just, there's lots of um, tones in here of brown, kind of like tan and lighter green, like a lighter yellow, and then more of a, that kind of neon chartreuse, just kind of in washes. So this like reads, definitely is a tonal, but kind of a solid, um, and it's really beautiful. I am really excited to use this for like socks, um, for like a shawl would be beautiful. So this is really pretty. I have another uh, skein of yarn, which is this right here is the Duck Boots colorway, which I already showed you. Um, this is it caked up and this is a, it in a skein. And this is a beautiful, this might be one of my favorites um, that I dyed. It really is 
a perfect warm brown that would look gorgeous in a sweater. Um, I think this would look so beautiful in like a cabled sweater. It would look beautiful in shawls and hats and mittens and gloves. I mean, it really is like you throw a pop of color with this and it's a, it's a perfect neutral. You pair this with a cream or a neutral and then this becomes the pop of color. You pair it with blue with the neon kind of sprout color and it looks beautiful. Um, so this was kind of like that color that bound everything together. Um, and it was received really well. This uh, sold out really quick and I will be dying more and this will be going up in the shop on Saturday on the 20th, February the 20th. Um, I'm not quite sure what time yet, so stay updated on my Instagram, um, Pitchfork Fiber, where you can hear more. So that's that. Love this color. I really want to do, again, socks. I already did the hat where I held it double and it looked, you know, who would know? Like, that's so, it just, it really is so versatile. Um, so really, like, if you can get your hands on this, I think this is something that, really should be like would be great in anyone's stash um because you can use it really with anything um so i love this yeah it's really warm caramel like caramel um so the duck boot if you don't know a duck boot is like a type of shoe or a boot that is has like a leather kind of outer sole or outer top part that is this color and um again with like the duck boot and the rain i thought it was very fitting for the spring colorway so that's that i have some other colors um but i don't have them with me i have pastel rainbow which was kind of the uh the fun unique color of this collection it is a um light pastel rainbow of kind of blush of a teal mint color of a sky blue um, a warm yellow kind of cream all together and the way that it was dyed they melt together very well so knit up um it will read as kind of just like a a pastel fluffy like a fluffy cloud um i really was in, i was really happy with the way that came out and i think that it looks it looks really good in the thicker DK yarn. Um, the DK is so squishy. I think the way that it took the colors, it really um, accentuates the kind of like fluffy quality of the yarn. Um, so it looks really beautiful. Again, rainbows, the rain, you know, fluffy clouds. That was just like the vibe I was going for. And so this, I think they would look beautiful again in socks or in a shawl. I think this would be a great color. Um, almost as like a neutral in a shawl and then adding those colors um, maybe brighter pops to go with it could be super fun and vibrant um, or also it could be really toned down with like pairing it with peony which is my next colorway peony is again a dusty kind of um, pink where it has kind of earth tones to it like a light kind of beige tan but then also more vibrant kind of speckles of or washes of warmer blush. So it really is, um, in my mind, when I think of peonies, which are my favorite flower, they have the, the they kind of gradiate from the leaves, like as they come out, the, or the petals, they, they gradiate out, and then the center is always kind of like a dark warm brown. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where my inspiration came from. And I love this colorway. I think a sweater, like in the DK weight, um, the DK weight sweater with peony all over would be so warm and scrumptious. It can read neutral again because of that, the tonality of the color. It's not quite so vibrant that it comes off as like bright pink, but it also has those warm undertones and the, of the, the neutral kind of beige and tan to make it a neutral. I think it would look really cute, if, you know, a sweater in that with blue jeans or um, over like a dress or pair it, you know, with some nice, like fun, funky color pants. It could be like a total different vibe. There's so many ways to use these colors. And again, peony would look really fantastic with this color sprout, with duck boots. It would look super cute with, um, I think it would look awesome with pastel rainbows because the, the colors really are 
all in there. Um, so again, love that. And then the last colorway, um, which again, might be tied for my favorite is April Showers. April Showers is a really fun speckled blue um, and kind of teal and navy and dark, um, dark kind of blue hue. It's a, it's a blue yarn with tons of different colors in there. The, um, that was the most labor intensive skein to dye. And I love the way it turned out. I love the speckles. I love when it's knit up. They meld together and they still read um, speckly and interesting and fun, but it's not too crazy that you can't use it in other projects. Like it really can be a versatile yarn as well. Um, throw it in a shawl. I think it would look stunning. Again, socks. Um, Caleb from Drowning in Yarn used that colorway in a pair of socks already, and it looks so awesome. Um, I love that knit up. And that again would look really, really cute with like any other color in the collection. So the moral of the story is like really any of the colors go well together. And I think that that is like what Pitchfork Fiber stands for is like really just understanding color and having beautiful um, different varieties of hues and tones and colorways that will go well together and, and you can't really go wrong. So I'm really excited about the future of Pitchwork Fiber. I'm so thankful for all of you who like helped, helped get me started. Um, I am hoping to play around with some new colorways soon. Um, so stay tuned here and also on Instagram. Instagram is like where I probably talk about my things the most frequently. And also sign up for my newsletter. I'll have a link down below where you can sign up for the newsletter. And also there will be um, a link in my bio on my Instagram where you can also sign up for my newsletter. And there on the newsletter, you will find tons of, it, that's like the place you wanna be. You're gonna get info about the shop updates. You're gonna be getting potent, um, you know, special offers and kind of incentives for being a part of the Pitchfork Fiber family. Um, you'll get beautiful photos of all the yarns. And also that's where I'm gonna highlight in the, like I'm gonna be kind of collecting um, all of your beautiful creations of your yarns and I'm gonna be displaying them for everyone else to see. So um, there will be sp spotlights and features of other um, knitters, crocheters, weavers, whatever out there that are using Pitchfork Fibers in the wild. And that will be really fun. So make sure to sign up for the newsletter so that you get notified um, first. That's like the first place to find info. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I need to actually, I'm dying some yarn right now, so I need to get to that. But I really appreciate you spending time with me. I'm very excited about like where Pitchfork Fiber is going and it definitely wouldn't be possible without all of you. Um, make sure to mark your calendars for the this Saturday, the 20th, February 20th for shop update. I'll be making sure that everyone knows about it um, again on the newsletter and on Instagram. And uh, let me know down below, like what kind of colors you wanna see. Um, I, I love the idea of a collection because it really is a, a way to kind of encapsulate a vibe, a mood, a time. But I love the idea of doing kind of spin-off colors that are with, that kind of are like set aside from that, that can also be really fun to pair with those collection yarns. So um, leave me some, down below some comments about what you want to see from me. Um, but that's about it. Other than it being really cold, I'm going to go bundle up in more warm knits. But I hope you all have a lovely time um, staying inside and knitting, getting some extra knit time. And I hope you have lovely crafting and making ahead of you. So with that, I will see you next time. Thank you for joining and have a good one. Bye. <laughs>